Blog Talk Radio. I'm going to a city that's set on a hill. Its ruler and maker is the Lord God above. Oh, I'm going to a city and it's set on a hill. And someday I'll be in heaven and there'll be no sorrow there. Oh, I'm going to a city at last four square. Hello, everybody. God bless you today. This is Susan Puzio, and I want to welcome you to the Prophetic News radio broadcast on Blog Talk Radio, and we're also heard on Christian Sentinel Radio, which is the network of our sister Jackie Elnor, who's our guest today. We have a great show for you, and uh, we're going to talk about the ecumenical movement, the great whore The end times, Joel's army, oh, there's so much to talk about. So many things are happening in the world and in the church. Uh, Don't forget our website, propheticnews.com, our YouTube channel, which is under my name, Susan Puzio, and our book, Seed Faith, Can a Man Bribe God? How False Teachers Manipulate and Hypnotize You for Offerings. So those things are out there for you. And if you need to email me about anything, you can email me, Susan at propheticnews.com. Okay? So let's bring on our guest, Jackie Alnor. Jackie. Susan. (laughs) Here we are for another exciting episode. Well, there's never a dull moment, is there? I'm telling you, it's just like boom, 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 one thing after another. And uh, But we can kind of uh, compare the upheaval in the political world to the upheaval that's in the church, because it's kind of like that in the church, the church politics. It's the Democrats against the Republicans. So there's the truth teller and there's the soothsayers. Yep. That's a good way to put it. And and it seems like the devil uses the same MO in both places. And um, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't stop. He he's got a deception custom made for everybody. And so we all have to be on our spiritual toes these days. Yeah, I know, but no, no, no. Can't be too judgmental. Uh <laughs> you have to be loving. Yeah, and we must test all things and hold fast to that which is good, which means that which is biblical. <laughs> I know, but it, it it always amazes me that people won't read the whole Bible in context. They like to pull things out. And when I really started to read the Bible in context, and wow, I saw so many things that I never really saw before because you could sit under teachers and you can read books. And so you get it, you kind of get a mindset about what the Bible says. But if you really look at it, 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 it's like one rebuke after another. Well, today they're saying, well, we mustn't rebuke or exhort or reprove or anything, you know, because we, you know, that gets in the way of unity. (laughs) Like that, I couldn't believe that. it because I posted that in the um, in the series I just completed called Ecumenicide Streams Ablaze, and uh, it was it was a clip that I played of Jack Hibbs talking to his mentor James Robeson, and and uh, Hibbs was just glowing greatly over his you know being in the White House and with all of those other so called Christians which we know as mostly heretics. And he says, oh, it was so wonderful. There was such unity and there was no reproving and no admonishment, you know, none of that. Yeah, well, they're going to be in for a big surprise because don't cozy up to the whore. Don't cozy up to prostitutes and whores because you're going to get yourself into trouble. You're just going to get yourself into trouble. And so 
some people might say, well, don't use such a strong word. Well, it's, it's in the Bible. The word's in the Bible. And it's a strong word, but God uses it freely. Right. And, he's, and he, we're prophesied to see the, up, the rise of the spiritual harlot, the, uh, the mother harlot, who is also, I guess, depending on your translation, she's always also called the, the, the great whore or the mother of harlots. And so somehow the mother gathers all her little harlots under her wings in the end times. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's good. Explain that a little bit to the people because that's that's a good. Yes, well, that's uh, Revelation 17, the great whore who sits on many waters and who rules over the kings of the earth and who has a cup full of a golden cup of abominations in her hand. And, uh, of course, if anyone has gone into a Catholic church, you'll see the gold chalice that they have. And, uh, you know, so and the, the Catholic church refers to herself in the feminine, and she calls herself the mother church. In fact, there is even a statue. I did an article about this once because on the, on the official Catholic web pages, you can see the actual personification of the mother church. They've even got this woman who isn't Mary, by the way, and they don't claim it's Mary, but it's a pers- it's another personification of what they call the mother church, and it's a female, and it's a her. And if you, you know, looking at Revelation, it's a woman that rides the beast, and yeah. she's the mother of harlots. And when I say, when, and when they refer to themselves as the mother church, what they're saying is, at the Reformation and even the, the prior Reformations, such as when the Church of England came about and when the split between the Eastern and Western churches happened. So there were several splits. And so that's why they say she's the mother church, because all these other denominations spun off of her. And that's how they see it. And, and they see themselves as the one and only church that was established by Jesus Christ as if he established some some institution that would insti- institutionalize Christianity <laughs> it, it's true and, and to institutionalize Christianity is and and to to you know say that all the kings have to okay everything through them and this is still the official claim of the of, of the Roman Catholic Church that ev- everybody on the planet and every king needs to be in submission to the Pope, the Vicar of Christ. Um, and and this is why I produced the uh, the four part series I just did to show how all roads lead to Rome, and everybody is downplaying the differences now in order to unify as a political power by yeah. by downplaying the differences or as Hibbs would say no admonishment no exhortation no reproof yeah. rebuking and exhorting as we're told in the bible for those who come with another doctrine so yeah. so it's all in play and that's the ult- that's the ultimate destination of this false ecumenical movement is the reunification with Rome. And when the rapture happens, be it pre mid post or whatever, when the rapture happens, those that are taken in the rapture are those that are not part of the harlot. Cause I'm sorry, if you're part of that harlot, you're staying behind because you, you you have you have things to do come Revelation 17, so you're not going anywhere if you're part of that. Yeah, it's, I don't know uh, why these men, mainly men, and there's some women involved in it, but mainly the men, why they don't read their Bible. Like, why are they taking those verses out and co- especially cozying up to the Catholic Church after we've had such a bloody history with them, which they tried to wash over because, uh, or they tried to cover it anyway, because they said for many years, even tried to uh, deny the inquisition at one point, like it never happened. And 
they have a bloody history of murdering people that didn't join their church. So what does that have to do with Christianity anyway? Hmm. Not to mention the Bible for a long time was on the banned list of books that the Catholic <laughs> Church banned. Yeah, remember In fact, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and they burned Tyndale at the stake yeah, uh, for translating for yeah. translating it into the vernacular. So because they they want to control over that. And see, that's one of the arguments that Catholics will, will bring up, you know, is when you tell them, you know, scripture alone, and they say, well, how did you get the scripture? We're the ones that gave it to you. <laughs> no, they're not. They, they, they hijacked yeah. the, the whole thing. And, um, but, but they're not the ones that gave us scripture. There were many different bishops of Rome until what was it until about the sixth century with what Gregory the first, I believe. And I could, you know, that's off the top of my head. I might have to confirm exactly when it was, but it was, it was, you know, hundreds of years after, after Pentecost. So, uh, it, so there were bishops in every area you had, you know, and bishop just meant overseer of, of, of an area. Yeah. And then the Bishop of Rome decided he was higher and mightier than everybody else. And so uh, so the Catholic Church was Catholic as far as universal. There was a universal church and there were bishops in different areas just overseeing what was going, you know, what was being taught and everything. And it was good to have overseers making sure that heretics weren't coming in. I mean, there is a purpose for that. Uh, But but bishop was not a title. It was right. it was a it was a position as far as as um, being a servant of the Lord and making sure that that wolves didn't come in and making sure that everything that was happening in their jurisdiction wasn't wasn't um, going against Scripture and so that's why they brought together different um, councils and they they called the group that met in um, Jerusalem headed up by James, by the way, and not by Peter when they <laughs> had to, de- de- when they had to make the determination <laughs> if uh, Gentiles should be circumcised. Remember that in the book of Acts. Yeah. Okay. So they all gathered together and James kind of is the one that oversaw this whole thing and, and made, and everyone kind of agreed, you know, what was right. And so, they'll take something perfect like that and then distort it for, you know, well, you know, since, uh, you know, there's a po- apostolic succession idea that, um, you know, that, that whatever power was given to the apostles belonged to them who holds the keys. So anyway, I don't want to get too far off the whole thing by getting into Catholic doctrine, but it, it, it you know, the, the the visible part of the church, not the whole thing, but because God always had his own people. Yeah. But right. the institution that, that, that they turned it into was, was man-made, not, yeah. you know, so, uh, and so anything. And so today the, the deception has just come full circle now. And, um, People like James Robeson are leading the so-called John 17 movement to bring everybody together is, you know, and, and then under the Pope and the Pope's idea is to bring all religions together. So you've got, yeah. you know, you've got the, the ecumenical movement is in two steps and all the, well, at least two steps, but they're all designed to undo the, the the true church and distort it so that it can't even be differentiated from the false lying whore church. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to uh, play this scripture here from Titus. We'll play this Titus one. It's about two minutes. Yeah. The epistle of Paul to Titus chapter one. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, mine own son after the common faith, 
Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled, leaving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Wow. Yeah, I'll say, wow. None of this came as a surprise to the Lord, did it? Not at all. It's kind of like a roadmap of what's happening today. (laughs) Precisely. Oh, and I just love the description of the true bishop, the true overseer of the Lord. Oh, Lee. I don't think you can think of a certain, any person naming themselves bishop in which those dis- descriptions um, apply to. Well, and the thing is, uh, sometimes people say, well, you, you're being negative. Well, how do you put a spin on heresy? You can't, it's... Uh, they could read that scripture and basically what we talk about and we talk about it a lot is the, is the false bishops that do everything for money. And Titus, the book of Titus specifically um, comes against that kind of thing. And uh, so I don't know how they can overlook these kind of things and then not want to uh, rebuke and correct. Well, we're supposed to receive correction if we're, if we're going off in our doctrine, but they like to tell you that doctrine is not important. Sometimes you can see with this ecumenical movement, they want to put aside doctrinal differences Yes, and they try to say some are essential and some are peripheral. Uh, but, you know, so many essential doctrines keep getting pushed aside to being peripheral. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and and yeah. that's the problem. One of, and, and I, the, to deal with what I had to show as far as the big picture of what the false teachers are, are unifying over is the idea that the church is supposed to rule over the nations. And that is, you know, the latter reign dominionism idea that, you know, belief in that these false teachers have said over the past hundred years or so that the end times is going to be this big glorious church that is going to, you know, bring in the kingdom without the king, basically. And, and that's what we're seeing really going full speed ahead right now is that, the, the the unifying of the so-called church in order to be a political power. And, um, and, and they yeah. see Trump, President Trump is their ace in the hole for doing that. He's their Trump card <laughs> for yeah. thinking that they can achieve what their false prophets had prophesied over the years. Um, and, and so that's, that's a, that's a very scary thing because when they go into what is in the past has been, sound churches and solid churches 
And um, once the leaders who started those churches have passed off the scene, it seems like, you know, like what I have pointed out that, that uh, like what the apostle Paul said, after my departure, wicked men are going to come in and deceive and, um, and bring disciples up after themselves. And that's, that's what's happened on a big scale in so many different areas. Um, So it's, it's, they're scattering the sheep and they're welcoming the mixed multitude because they think there's power in numbers. Wow. And, and, and that's what they're doing now. So I, I don't know. You'd have to watch the whole four part series. I, I delved so much into this for the past couple of weeks that it's actually left me kind of weary. (laughs) You know, Oh, I know. I know. It's hard to look at some of this stuff too close up without just, uh, you know, trying to catch your breath. It's very, very true. It's very true because there's so we see so much, especially when you do the research. And then, of course, you're listening to these people and you're listening to what's going on and you're saying, oh, my goodness. You know? <laughs> How did it get like this? And where are the Jeremiah's? Where are the Isaiah's? Mm. Where are the Ezekiel's? Where are the Nathan's? Where are they? Mm. Now, there's no. some men out there. There's some good men and some good women. But, yeah, it, it's, it's a, uh, it is a remnant. Absolutely. And it's the deception. For someone who doesn't see the big picture, the deception is so subtle you know, maybe it's not so subtle the way that the spirit of the age is deceiving people in the world, but when he sneaks into the church, he comes in unnoticed, and he shipwrecks the faith of many, and that's the outcome, unfortunately, and so when churches allow false teaching to come in under the guise of worship music, it can it can draw people in and they start speaking the same lingo. They, they yeah. have their own vocabulary. Uh, yeah, the big, one of the, and that's why I called this uh, streams ablaze because this is certain vocabulary you're hearing in the, in the false church. And they might have a, they might have a little speck of, of, of a metaphor that might be used in the Bible, but they take it out of all original meaning and so you've got the fire thing where fire fire you know consuming fire fall on us and then you've got the well we're all tributary uh, streams into the same big river the problem is the river is the river sticks that goes right through Dante's hell you know <laughs> yeah. and, and and they love to use the word wind because they can find one passage that says um, that the Holy Spirit is, you know, is, is like, is like a wind that you don't know where it's coming from. And, and then they forget the one where peop where the Bible says that these people are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Yes, exactly. So they're mixing up their metaphors all over the place and fire and river and stream. Uh, th- those are the, those are the big ones. And uh, they'll find one scripture that uses it one way and then they'll use it to to try to to communicate an entirely different unbiblical idea that we all have to be you know like like the river that flows out of the center of the throne of god the river of life okay so there is a river of life in heaven yeah. <laughs> well so are they're gonna they're gonna anal- make that an allegory into us being a river and we're all going to be little tributaries. That that was the the Robeson thing that I showed. All these tributaries making this big river, and oh, get your toes in, get your feet wet. And that was that was that term was really started a lot back with the holy laughter movement. Yeah, and that was the river, the river. Yeah, the, the river. The, jump in the river. Jump in the and, river. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing Jack Hayford at the time. You know, and and when he when when the Toronto thing was going on, when it was still part of the vineyard and the holy laughter stuff started that, that um, Jack said uh, like, Oh, all of you people standing on the banks of the river and then you won't even get your little toes wet, you know, and you can, you you can't really criticize until you've jumped in, you know, take, you know, take a flying leap of faith and jump into that river. 
Yeah, well, I yeah. saw a lot of people jumping in, but uh, it didn't do much. It didn't really change change them. It's the word of God that changes you. You can jump in the river all day long. That's, what, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what's going to change you. Uh, how could how could you bypass that uh, scripture in Titus where it's, it says their mouths must be stopped? Uh, yes, yes. They must be silenced because yeah. they are leading every. And it's interesting that it would say shipwreck when they're telling you to get into the river, but it's yeah. going to shipwreck you. Well, that's that's where the ships are, is on the river, right? And well, you're going to have a shipwrecked they, ship. <laughs> well, exactly. If they ever really did, say they took a survey of all the people that went to these river meetings and the, and what became of all the churches that participated in the river meetings. I would That's like I would question. like to yeah I would like to see those statistics anyway to see what really happened. I know in my community where we had the uh, uh, Rodney came and spent a month at the church that I attended. It wound up closing up a year or two after, and that was the end of the whole thing. And then and then the church became a wedding. Somebody bought it and made it a wedding venue, but there was. A, yeah, everybody was jumping into the river and there was all these glowing prophecies about what was going to happen. And the same thing with Carpenter's Home Church in Lakeland. They had, he was there for months and he could pack the place out because sometimes he'd have 9,000 people in that building. And it wound up being bulldozed and demolished, bankrupt. So, yeah, I'd like to know really what the outcome was for uh, all the people that jumped in to the river, but let's listen to, here's Paul Crouch, Jackie, here's Paul Crouch talking about doctrinal doo-doo. God's bridges, <laughs> when the harvest is perishing out there, and God's calling the body to come together, let him sort out all this doctrinal doo-doo. I don't care about it. I don't care anymore. Kingdom now, uh, kingdom then, uh, P pre, mid, post, ah, uh, who cares, ministry? Get on with the rally. I'm tired of scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites blocking God's bridges when the harvest is perishing out there. Call the body to come together. Let him sort out all this doctrinal doo-doo. I don't care about it. I don't care anymore. Kingdom now. Uh, kingdom then. Uh, P pre, mid, post, ah. Uh, who cares, ministry? Get on with the rally. I'm. <laughs> Get on with the rally. Well, that's what he did, and he corrupted so much of the church. TBN did its job of the spirit of Antichrist in going yeah. all around the world and spreading a false gospel, the prosperity message. The word faith idea of name it and claim it, decree it, and all of these kinds of things, they spread a false Christianity around the whole world, and it became leaven that really has corrupted so many. It, the majority of people calling themselves Christians, they, they were weaned on this stuff. This is how they came to understand Christianity, and, and that's an abomination, and um, that's because they were getting their theology from, you know, from Bethel and Hillsong worship songs, which were no worship at all. And uh, they were worshiping themselves, actually. And, they, and then they would watch their favorite TV preacher. And they, they wouldn't even open up the word and, and, and search it out for themselves the way the Bereans did with the Apostle Paul. <laughs> even testing the Apostle Paul and he, he, he you know, uh, congratulated them for doing such a thing. So I, I'm just, you know, the whole thing is just sad because this is how this generation grew up on Christian television that was started in what, around 1974 with TBN and then Daystar, God TV, and all of them picked it up and they all made their fortune on the false give to get yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, appealing to man's greed. Yes. And they all is did. is yeah. how they grew. That is the foundation of those yeah. stations. Every one of them. Yeah. Every one of them are bought into the lie, 
and uh, they managed to corrupt themselves and then to corrupt the minds of the simple that were out there you know, buying into it, which they're still doing today. They're still, imagine Marcus and Joni Lamb, they take in $50 million a year, I think, in their selling their airtime and then doing their begathons that they do the disgraceful heart for the world, they call it, when they have no heart for the world at all. And uh, then they take PPP money from the government. Imagine that. They took millions of dollars from the government. For what? Hmm. Why should they take money that uh, that other people may need when they're taking in $50 million a year? Oh, how greedy can you get? So, yeah, these people are despicable. They have no conscience. I don't know. What, once you start selling out Jesus and prostituting yourself, for the for they call it for the gospel's sake, and you're finished. You just 